I raced a dunk. Uh, I did a four door Caprice about 2005, maybe. And you know, the gumball 3000 rally and the, and the, uh, bull run rallies yeah. and all this. I've won all those rallies. Yeah. Uh, you, and, uh, I want to talk about that. Keep yeah, going. Though. So, uh, and I always build something different because oh, any, any asshole can show up with a Ferrari. All right. Yeah. So I always show up with something that's just off the wall. So back then the, all the videos and stuff that were, you know, circulating, everybody's in these donks. And so I put a, a whole Cadillac Escalade inside, uh, a four door 76 P green, uh, Chevrolet Caprice. Like I'm talking like grandma's go to the church car and I put it up on 24s and that damn thing would run like a scalded dog. So I show up and everybody's laughing. I'm in a four door Caprice. It's just all lifted on stupid wheels and all this. And then, uh, you know, we're going down the freeway and I just fly past a guy in like a Ferrari or something doing about 180. And he's like, what the hell? Holy shit. Yeah. So we had a lot of fun doing that stuff. Uh, what is, so how do those work? Those gumballs? They, they you've, cause you've done it. The Cannonball Run, right? I have the Cannon. Well, I had the Cannonball World Record. That's it, thirty-one fifty-nine. Uh, we did that back in two thousand seven on Mother's Day weekend, and we were the first ones to break the actual record since nineteen seventy-nine. So funny. I I always thought the Cannonball Run was. I thought it was just a movie. No, uh, Cannonball Run was a movie uh, based on an actual movement that was back in the seventies of against the man and the fifty-five mile an hour speed limit yeah. and you know uh, gas prices and all that kind of stuff. So Hal Needham and all his buddies did that shit. And then they said, well, let's make a movie out of it. So they got everything together and made the movie. God, and that's uh, so crazy. It's been broken a few times uh, since. It didn't get broken for about five, to maybe six years. And then uh, it started. Now it's getting pretty competitive. I think the, I think they're getting real close to doing it in 24 hours. Really? Yeah. So what, what does that look like? It's you and another buddy. It's, there's no rules except for started started a. Uh, uh, the red ball garage or they bought <laughs> the red ball garage and go to uh redondo beach and that's it so how it, many people can be in the car doesn't matter doesn't even matter in the car there's no rules this, but it's you have finished. to be the driver you have to be the driver nope you, you can be part of the driver you can switch drivers you can do all that shit really yeah that's and uh so me and me and dennis were actually uh on another rally we were in uh canada i don't know canada whatever that side is, is that montreal on that side yeah or? okay and then we were going to be racing to New York. We were on the bull run and we were going to race all the way down to Key West. And this is a little bit of a kick-ass story. So while we're there, we get there to do the race. The Ferrari's all set up. We got tanks, got radar detectors, got every gadget you can imagine. And remember, this is 2007. One of our buddies at the bar, we get to talk about Cannonball Run. And he's like, it can't be broken. And me and Dennis are like, we think it can. We think we can break the record. He's like, well, I'll, I'll bet you 50 grand you can't. And I said, I'm not going to bet anybody 50 grand. I said, cause odds are you're not going to make it. You're going to get caught. You're going to have a problem. And even a small problem, like a 25 minute ticket, you know, sitting on the side of the road, you'll never make that time up. Yeah. And I said, so that'd be a dumb bet. He goes, well, how about this? Y'all do it. And I'll give you 50 grand if you break it and you don't have to give me anything if you don't. And I said, okay, rich guy, uh, we'll do that. Yeah. You know? So we're on a rally. So the next morning the rally is supposed to start and you know, it's a seven day rally all the way down the East coast. We leave the rally and go to New York and set up uh, at the starting point. And uh, this is now a Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. And we, I hired a limo company that I knew in, uh, in uh, New York City because there's three ways off the island there uh, in Manhattan. And uh, I guess there's three Brit main bridges. Yeah. And uh, so I had limos at each one uh, looking for cops, looking for everything else. I had another set of limos staged out on all three of those routes. Because my deal was, we've got to get off the East Coast as fast as possible. We, no matter what, because if we don't get off fast, we'll never make the time up. Yeah. And uh, so once we were ready to go, we we radioed in. They said you got to go this route, so we picked that route. And as we picked off limos, uh, and we had like seven of them staged out, out out there. As we were picking them off, they were slowing traffic behind and keeping us abreast of what was going on behind us. Oh. And that's that was the great. only little trickery that we did. Uh, other than that, we just ran hard. We were doing, you know, if the if the weather or if the road was clear, we were averaging in the, you know, 150, 160 all the time, all the time, all the time. You know, if if the road was clear, you know, and there's a lot of empty clear roads out there when, when you start driving around. Oh, America. I've I've driven this I mean, across this country a bunch. We we went across Oklahoma on that toll road or on 40, and uh, I I don't think we ever got below 150. I mean, we were just gone. There was nobody out. It, it, we we just hauled ass. So we ended up finishing in uh, 31 hours and 59 minutes, which beat the record by 30 or so minutes, I think it was. And 
Um, we stopped the car physically five times for gas. Um, we had two tanks. We had the regular tank, one in the trunk. And uh, so that took up time. And the fifth time was uh, I had already called my car and trailer driver to meet us in New York or in California in case we made it because I wanted the car back across the other side to meet up with the rally. Because remember, it's a seven-day rally, Saturday and Saturday. It's only Monday morning now. And oh, yeah. uh, so he had gas, and we pulled over and splashed five gallons because we were literally going to miss the hotel by four or five miles. We had no gas. Really? And uh, so we got lucky there, finished it. There was all kinds of newscasts there and everything because uh, they knew we were coming in. We were keeping in track with the hotel and the PR firm and everything. And so it's all over the paper that we beat it. And the other guys are in the rally on the other side of the United States, right? So my team grabs the car with three guys in the truck and they haul ass back across. Me and Dennis get loaded, get some sleep, get a private jet and fly back across. And we're sitting in Savannah, Georgia now by, I guess it was Wednesday, with the car that's already traversed yeah. across the nation twice, waiting on the rally guys to come in and the guy that bet us the money. So they come in and we're, they're like, what? How, you know how did you do this right yeah. and uh I, I hate to go this long but it's such a no no story. please please i need to write this i need to write a book on this one week so the, by the way that you you definitely have to yeah so you know then with every all the commotion all the everything else you're still partying picking up chicks and doing whatever you know it, you know if you're single <laughs> and uh uh <laughs> yeah you know it's just glamour but uh Anyways, uh, then we get on the rally. He goes, what are you doing back here? I says, shit, I'm still in the rally. I'm going to whoop y'all all, all yeah. the way down to Key West. So we get to Miami, and the, and the guy that bet us the 50 grand, he goes, hey. He goes, we all know the next stop is Key West, and it's only one road, and there's a lot of cops and everything else. He goes, uh, how about this? He goes, I'll bet you double or nothing that we can get into Key West before any of these cars, and I'll let you cross the finish line first, and we will be first and second in that order. And I go, oh, okay, let's just check it out, you know, because there really is. They were already warning us that there were cops in every single town. It's a three-hour yeah. drive down there and all this. So they give us the card to go. There's a lunch stop in Marathon, in Marathon Key, I think is what they call it. And he goes, you follow me no matter what. So we take off, and we're going north. And we're not going south. I'm like, what is this dude doing? And he, I said, dude, are you sure? He goes, just follow me or you lose. And I'm like, okay. So we come into uh, this gated area and they kick open the gate. It's like the scene from Con Air. It's Ukulaka Airport. And we come around the edge of this metal hangar and he's got a DC-9 plane sitting there and a, and, a, and a ground crew and none of them speak English. And the captain, you couldn't have, you couldn't have scripted this. He's the, the guy with the half the cigar and the, and the leather jacket all hanging open with yeah. a flappy hat. And he's like, oh, Anthony, Anthony, you know, give this, you know, and we put these things on the, the, these two, um, like little pallets and they're trying to squeeze them in the door with the forklift and they have to turn. They push the two cars in there and uh, they were like, well, somebody has to go with the cars because they're going to have to need help loading them and, and uh, unloading them. And uh, what have you? I said, well, uh, you know, and the only rule in those rallies is kind of gentleman's rule. You make the stop because the stop is usually lunch or something stupid that you need to see. Yeah. And it's kind of like keeps the cars together and makes yeah. it more fun. So uh, I go, Jay, I said, so, Dennis, my 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 co-pilot and and uh, and uh, the other co-pilot get on the Byron, get on the plane. And I mean, this thing is leaking oil and smoking. I mean, it, this looks like a beat up, dilapidated freaking freighter, right? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not going. On One of those that. old Eastern airlines that it flew bad. into Cuba. Yeah. It, yeah, it literally was. I wasn't going to be surprised if they didn't fly to Cuba and just not bring us back our cars. Yeah. And uh, so I guess JD, our, uh, my my buddy, um, I said, well, how are we going to make the lunch stop, dude? He goes, that's what the helicopters are for. And there's two helicopters spooling up uh, just past the plane. And I go, well, what do we need two for? And he just pushes me down, just kicks me right in the chest, pushes me on the ground. He goes, it's still a race. And he's like running, <laughs> he's like running to his helicopter. And uh, so he took the helicopters, landed in Marathon <coughs> Key, got a car to take us to where the, the lunch stop was. And everybody's like, you know, where's your car? Went, oh, fuck, we're out of gas. You know, they went to go get gas and all this. And we're sitting there like when all the cars are leaving to go on down to uh, Key West. And uh, they're laughing at us because our boys aren't back with the car. They think they went to go get gas and shit. And we're just like, yeah, okay. As soon as they leave, we jump in something else and drive away and get back in the helicopters flying to Key West. Cars are on the ground. Everything's safe. We're, we're the first ones there by like 26 minutes. 
And we're sitting there with the cars, with coolers of beer and sitting there. And the first guy that comes around the corner, he knows he hasn't been beat. He's always been in the lead, right? He's, yeah. He's happy as shit. No one's passed him. He's coming in the first, right? <laughs> and he turns the corner and just, Arr! and he looks at, you can see him pounding his dash. He doesn't know what the hell happened. He gets out. Fuck you guys. You cheated. This, I said, there are no rules, man. Yeah. There's none. So we literally, you know, in Canada, down in New York, across the uh, Renando oh Beach, back to Savannah, down there, cars on an airplanes, uh, helicopter rides, and freaking whooped everybody's ass at the end. God damn, you got to write a book. That's like Fear and Loathing <laughs> in Las Vegas. It was freaking like that. 